everyone, you're watching uh, episode 5 of the Field the Sky instructional videos. I think it is 5, let's see. Um, yes, song number 5 is called Memories. Uh, sorry, I should know my records better. But uh, anyway, uh, the, it's a ballad and uh, it's not very hard to play and uh, you can figure out the melody probably all by yourself, just by ear. And uh, except for the solo, there's really nothing too complicated about it, except maybe for the chord progression. And uh, it's very simple chords as far as uh, harmony goes, the theory goes, but they're pretty interesting fingerings and they have some extensions and stuff like that. And so I was thinking about what to do about this song and I thought that I could make a video on how to name chords, which is maybe one of the most asked questions, you know, uh, by people who are learning. And even by people who know how to play, but they really haven't studied their theory. And it's really important to know, because if you are discussing with other musicians, bass players, other guitarists, you know, you it's really helpful that you know your chords and especially how to communicate uh, about them, you know. So, before we begin, I'm going to give you this table here. So hopefully, right now you're hearing my voice, but you're seeing something else. And uh, this table is called an interval table. It's, it's just a table of all the possible intervals between one note, which is the root, and all the other notes, half step by half step, that takes you back to the octave, which is the root, of course, just higher. Okay, so uh, just in case you haven't, please go back and make a screenshot of that table or, uh, you know, copy it down on a piece of paper. As you can see, we have all kinds of different roots, you know, from C to B, but we're only going to talk about the first one. The other one, I just put it there for your reference, you know, if you want to explore more, then you have them. Okay, so as you can see, we go from the root all the way back to the root, basically, which is the octave. And... Um, what a chord is, is a few notes played at the same time, okay? For this video especially, we're just going to say three or more notes played at once. Now, what happens when you play three, more, three or more notes at once? That it really doesn't matter what note they are, okay? What really matters is what distance there is between one note, which we'll call the root, and all the other notes in the chord. That's what makes up the formula. And so once you have the formula, you know the name of the chord, okay? It doesn't matter if you play C, E, G, or if you play... Uh, e, G sharp, B. They're different notes, but it's the same chord. Why? Well, because compared to the root, you're still using the, f the same uh, notes, or in this case, the first columns. You know, we're playing the root, we're playing the major third, and we're playing the fifth. Okay? So, this being said, oh, and there's one more thing we have to talk about before we begin, is that uh, this table, I, I wrote it down the way I did for um, simplicity, but there's a, another rule you should know, that you can diminish any interval and you can augment any interval. What do I mean by that? If you see the column in the middle, it says augmented fourth, diminished fifth, okay? So, and that's cool, we're gonna leave it at that. But you can also have augmented uh, thirds, for example. How do you do it? Well, you go one step higher than the major third. Now, what is the difference between an augmented third and a perfect fourth? Nothing, the note is the same, but it will have the name of the third. So let's make an example. If I'm playing in C and I want to play an augmented third, I'm going to call it E sharp, which is the major third is E, and I just raise it one half step. What I don't call it F because it's a third. C, D, E. Okay, so I have to call it E because it's a third. And then I can diminish the, the third, for example, and I can say, well, I'm going to play a diminished third. Well, how do I do that? I take the minor third, which is E flat, and I lower the half step. Uh, it's E double flat. Now, can I call it D? No, because it's a third. So if it's C, D, E, I still have to call it E, even though it's the same as the major second, which is D. Okay, so this is just for the sake of uh, later on, you know, you'll see why we had to go through this. Okay, so the first big family of chords is called the triads. And uh, of course, there's as many triads as you want, but we're gonna focus on four triads only, and they are major, minor, diminished, and augmented. Okay, so. Here is a formula for all of them. We'll go over them really quick in C. So if you want to play a C major chord, what do you do? You go to your table and look for the uh, column root, which is C, the major third, which is E, and then the perfect fifth, which is G. So you have C, E, G. You want to make that minor? Look at the formula for the minor chord. It's C, E flat, G. So C minor third, G. You just have to go to the right column and pick the note. Uh, as I said, I left you uh, a few more roots, so you say you want to do it in D, it doesn't matter. Go to D and then just refer to the right column. In the case of D for a minor chord, it would be D, minor third is F, and the fifth is A. Okay, so you have your minor chord. 
And these are the two main ones, actually, you play 90% of the time. Then there's another chord, which is very important, because it shows up if you play in a major key or a minor key, and it's a diminished chord. How do you do that? Root is C, minor third is E flat, just like the minor chord, but then the fifth, we don't take the perfect fifth, we pick the diminished fifth, which is G flat. Okay, and finally, we have an augmented triad, which is a bit weird, and it shows up later on when you play jazz scales and harmonic minors and stuff like that, but we'll go over it, it's one of the basics. So it's uh, root, major third, and augmented fifth. Again, you don't see augmented fifth on your table there, but as you know, you can augment any interval, so what it means is you go from C to E, which is a major third, and then you go to G sharp, which is the same as a perfect fifth, but raised uh, half step, so it's G sharp, okay? These are the main triads, so if you ever find a name like this, and you don't, you don't have to know them by heart, you know, all you have to do is know how they f they're formed, or have at least this video for reference, and then you can always go back and say, well, I have to play a major, uh, an augmented chord, how do I do it? Well, look for your root, and then just go to the right columns, and that's it. Um, so this is the, ba the basic ones. Then, let's say we add one more note. So the next family is, the, is, is the chords with four notes, and usually they're called seventh chords, because we play the root, the third, the fifth, just like we did with major and minor, but then we add one more option, which is the seven. Now, how, what happens now? Well, we have a few chords to pick from, and we're going to limit ourselves to a few. Okay, so let's say we have major chord where we can add the minor seventh or the major seventh, and then we have a minor chord where we can add either a major seventh or a minor seventh. Okay, so here are the names. When you have a major chord and you add a major seventh, you're going to have a major seventh chord, okay? When you have a major chord but with a minor seventh, you're going to get just, uh, for example, if it's a C, it's going to be called C seventh. Now, what you, can you take out from this? Well, the main idea is, here, is this. If a chord is major, you don't have to say it's major. And if a chord is minor, you have to say it's minor. So if you see the symbol C is just C major, but then C minor, you have to put the little M next to the name. For seventh, is exactly the opposite. A minor seventh, you don't have to write it down that it's minor. You just put a seventh in there, and people will know that you have to pick the column with the minor seventh. But if you want the major seventh, you know, the last column before the octave, you have to specify which is major, that it is a major seventh. Okay, so we combine these two rules, and it pretty much solves all your problems. Okay, so, uh, the first chord is C major. With a major 7, we have to put C, which implies it's major, but then you have to specify that the 7th is major, so it's C major 7th. C 7th is a major chord, because it just says C with nothing else, but has a minor 7th, because the 7 is also by itself, and it doesn't show uh, any major sign in front of it. Okay, so these are the two chords. Now, for minor, we have the basic chord is minor, the root, minor 3rd, and 5th, and then we can add a minor 7th, so again, what do we do? We use minor to say that the chord is minor, but the seventh doesn't need anything because it is minor. So we have C minor seventh, which means a minor chord with a minor seventh. Now, if we want to have a minor chord with a major seventh, we have C minor and then major seventh, which tells you the chord is minor and the major and the seventh is major. And finally, we're going to go through one more chord, which is very important, which is the diminished chord, and we're only going to look at this one. Uh, you have the diminished chord to begin with, the triad, it's uh, root, minor third, and uh, diminished fifth. And then you also have a minor seventh. And the name for this chord is colloquially named uh, semi-diminished, but usually you have to call it like this. C minor seventh, flat five. Okay, so this is, uh, and this is the seventh chord in a major scale, for those of you who, who know a little bit more. Okay, so these are the, the, the seventh chords, very important stuff. Okay, now if we move on, we, go, um, we can go either way. So let's, let's go with the extensions of the dominant chord, the seventh chord. If we uh, add more notes, we end up with 9, 11th, and 13th. Now, don't worry about that. 9 is the same as 2, 11 is the same as 4, and 13 is the same as 6. Okay, it's that easy. These longer names, the, you know, the higher numbers come from the piano, where you used to play all these notes one after the other. But on the guitar especially, you know, you never know where the ninth is, what height, you know. So, if you see a nine, it's a second. If you see an eleventh, it's a fourth. And if you see thirteen, it's a sixth. So, uh, let's see how it works. If we have uh, 
a major chord, a major seventh chord, and you see 9, 11, or 13, it means you're playing the major seventh chord, if it's called major seventh. If you see a major ninth, you have to play the major seventh plus a D, which is a second, a major second. If you see major 11, you're supposed to be playing the 7, the 9th, and the 11th, although usually just 7 and 11th. And then if you see the 13, you're going to play 7, 9, and 13. Don't worry about it too much if you forget, well, which one was I supposed to take out, because uh, on the guitar you usually don't have enough room to play all these notes anyway, so you sacrifice some. But this has to do with the voicing, you know, with the actual finger position on your guitar, and this is not what this video is about. You have to figure out that by yourself, or you know, we'll do another video, but it's chord vocabulary. We're talking just about the names of the chords, okay? So you can have a major seventh chord and expand it with 9, 11, and 13, and that will give you major 9, major 11, major 13, all right? So that means if you see a major with a number, it means the chord is major with a major seventh. What if you see um, a chord that says C9 or C11? Well, in that case, you have a dominant chord, which is the one a major chord with the minor seventh, here's the formula, and then you have to add, you have to add it to that chord. You can't just put a nine in there, you have to have the bass is the, the C seventh, and then you can have nine, eleven, and thirteen, and in that case the chord will be called C nine, C eleven, C thirteen. All these chords are seven chords, plus these notes. Okay? And for minor, it, sound, it, it works exactly the same as for major, so you can have minor 7, minor 9, minor 11, minor 13. Some of these are more popular than others, but anyway, a minor 9, minor 11, minor 13 chord uh, is just a chord that is a minor 7th chord plus 9, 11, or 13. Okay? And so that, that's usually one of the biggest problems. It's really easy, you know, as you can see. Uh, then there's other chords which are a bit weird. So, have you seen the, the suspended chords, for example, which is sus2, sus4, okay? These ones are pretty easy to explain, actually. Let's look at the two main ones. You have suspended second and suspended fourth. Now, what does that mean? If you can remember at the beginning of this video, uh, the difference between a major chord and a minor chord was the third. If it's a major third, it's a major chord, and if it's a minor third, it's a minor chord. What if we don't have the third? Okay, so that's the idea. Instead of using the third, we're going to use the major second or the perfect fourth. Okay, so this gives a, an uncertainty to the chord, which is really cool, and uh, we can have a video on that if you want. Just let me know in the comments. And uh, what, what do you call a chord that is not major or minor? Well, we call it suspended. We don't know what it is. So when, it's, uh, when, it, when we use the second instead of the third, we call this suspended second. And when we use the fourth instead of the third, we call it suspended fourth. So the formula for suspended second is root major second fifth, and if, if it's a suspended fourth, root major, uh, sorry, root perfect fourth fifth, okay? And then finally, I mean, there's a lot more chords, okay? So this is just uh, the really important ones, and well, not even important, because some people who use other chords will probably kill me for that. You know, just something that to get you going, you know, and if you know this like that, then you already have quite an advanced understanding of the chords, and then you can go on and learn a lot more. There's a lot more, but these are really the, the main ones. And uh, so, let's uh, continue with uh, the add chords. And these are some of my favorites, and, uh, you know, I, I like them a lot, and they sound great, and they're different from the 9th, 11th, and 13th chords in, because of this. You just add the note. Okay, so for example, if I have um, a major chord, C, E, G, that's C major, and I really want to have that D in there. I don't want to take out the E and change it from the D, that will give me a suspended second chord, but I don't want that. And also, I don't want to have to add the seventh. I don't want to have C, G, I mean C, E, G, B, and then the D. That would be a major ninth. I just want the ninth. I just want that second, that D. There's a chord for that too, and it's called add 9. So basically what, that's, what that means is that the, the, the notes that are 9, 11, and 13, which is the same as 2nd, 4th, and 6th, uh, and you can just add them to your chord. Okay, you can just go in and add the, add the note. And uh, to let people know that they're not 7 chords, because if you just write C9, they'll think it's a, it's a dominant chord. 
So you just put an ADD, you just write C add 9 or C add 11. And these are the formulas. So C add 9 is uh, root, major, uh, root, yes, major third, fifth, and major second, which is the same as 9. And if it's uh, add 11, it will be C root, major third, fifth, and then uh, the fourth, which is the 11, so add 11. You can do that with minors, so you can have C minor at 9, and it will be C minor plus the, the, the D, and then C, C minor plus the 11. It's that simple. One exception to this is if you add the sixth, which is the same as the 13, you just call it C sixth. So this is another big and important uh, group of chords, so let's go over it with the formula. C sixth is nothing but C, E, G plus a sixth which is uh, A. For minor, you can have C, uh, E flat, G, which is a minor chord, and then add the A, which is a sixth. And so we call it C minor six. Now, for the minor, there's another chord you should know, which is the minor, minor flat six, which is the same chord to begin with, the minor chord, C, E flat, G, plus an A flat. Now, this is very important because you'll figure out, you know, when, when you learn theory, if you already know it, you'll know that most minor chords require a flat 6, not a regular 6. But this is really about the name, so it will give you an idea of how you name them. Now what else? There's a lot more chords I have in my head and I, I really don't know if I should talk about them. I think this video is already long enough. So if you enjoy this and if you want to see more, and I know this is a bit quick and it's a bit, you know, um, I'm sitting here explaining to you and if you don't know a lot of theory, you might say, well, that's easy for you to say, but uh, it just to let you know that it's easy, you know, and to let you know that if you actually go back through this video and you stop and you really study it, then you'll know it. You know, there's nothing more to it. But if you would like to see more on this, uh, just send me, leave a comment here or send me an email. And uh, when we finish this series on on all the no on all the songs from the album, and as soon as I have time, we'll make maybe a, a short series of three or four videos and we'll discuss chords. Okay, so. We'll leave it at, this, at that for now, and then we'll we'll see how that goes. So I hope this was helpful, and please join us on Facebook. We just started a new page there, and uh, it's really cool. We're giving away, you know, uh, sometimes we give away CD or some concert tickets or whatever. So uh, stop by. I'll leave the link down here, and uh, it's actually easy. It's facebook.com slash andretonelli96. Okay, I guess andretonelli was taken. So anyway, I'll see you probably next week for another one of these videos from one of the songs on the album. And um, have fun, play guitar, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thanks. Yeah.